Hello everybody, my name is Pam Coey and this is a YouTube Live. So I've got two um, 22 by 30 sheets of Arches oil paper, okay? You're taped down. I use white tape because the blue tape is kind of annoying to me. And I've got plastic behind brown paper, which is behind this because you can see these lines here. Um, or maybe you can't see them, but anyways, there are vertical lines, there's horizontal lines because behind this whole thing, there's this grid that is uh, recent and it's for taking photographs um, and taking very high quality, high res photographs. So I didn't want to mess up that grid and get wet oil paints on it. So um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the paints I have here. So I'm gonna walk closer. Okay, so um, what I'm doing is I was looking over the challenges that have been submitted for this upcoming contest, and I'd like to thank Linda Liut Clementi for this challenge. I thought, you know, I could have um, done a lot of different things for the demo today, but I decided to take her challenge, and her challenge is warm and cool color painting challenge. Select two complements that are warm and cool. In the first study, Work with the warm color as the dominant. Use a full range of intensities and values. Use the cool complement as an accent and as a subordinate color. In the second composition, use the same subject, but reverse the color. Um, work predominantly cool with subordinate warm accents. I can't guarantee that they're gonna be similar compositions because that's not, um, uh, I mean, I can try to use similar shapes, but I don't think that, um, I think what I liked about the challenge for me personally is just the warm and the cool. Now I've got, like I said, 22 by 30 inch sheets of paper. I'm not working on panel, I'm working on paper. I've got all, all the things to do, my cold wax and oil painting. So I chose, you know, I could have chosen um, any warm, any cool compliment, but I chose uh, Gamblin's Ultramarine Blue here. And then I've got Gamblin's um, Transparent Orange which is very much like Indian yellow in the um, Williamsburg brand, I think it is. Um, it's a beautiful glazing color. And actually both of these are pretty transparent, but you'll see that when I start to mix them with tints, tones, and shades, I have full control over how opaque they become. So I also have titanium white. Um, it's a quick dry white from Gamblin. I have some ivory black. And then I've made up my cold wax medium and mixed in one to three Galka gel. And the Galka gel is in here, it's almost out. But um, anyways, this is what it looks like. Sorry, it's a tube just like this. <laughs> it's just like this tube. Anyways, it's almost um, gone. So I used up a lot of it. And I also stored the extra amount of the um, mixture of cold wax medium and Galka gel like I usually do. I mix more than I need and then I put it in this tin. And it'll stay good for about a week to two weeks. If you put it in a dedicated art refrigerator, it can stay for longer. I've got some brushes in case I want to do some drippy things and I, I think I might actually do that just because people keep asking me about the drippy paint. But before I can do that, I just want you guys to see that right here, I've got my pile of cold wax medium and um, Delta gel. I've got my transparent orange, my blue, my black. This is a Portland gray and white. And then I've got some Arnett pigment sticks that are kind of just, um, they're the orange, those are in orange. There's a black, ultramarine blue. This is a, blue, a light blue, it's cerulean extra pale. And the big sticks are neutral gray, pale, and titanium white. I like to have those available. And the first thing I do when I've got these paints out here is I like to add a little bit of the, um, you know, the mixture here and I, you know, go up to one to one. So I'm just gonna put a little dab next to here and just guesstimate what one to one is. Don't have to be super exact. And um, there's the black. And this is just so I don't forget to add it later. So here's my white. Pretty good, a little bit more. This already has it in there because this is leftover paint. So I'm just gonna mix it in.
Um, on this color wheel, you can see that color is really kind of complicated in that um, at first glance, it looks like half of that is warm and half of that is cool. Um, think of fire, all the colors that are in flames, and think of like um, glaciers, um, cool streams, all the colors that you think of that are cool. But what's, what makes this uh, challenge a little um, more complex, or it can be as complex as you want it to be, is that I could have chosen, and I have chosen actually, a warm blue. Now, normally blue, and I just got through saying that these are kind of, these are cool. But in every single case, each one of these colors, um, because this is not, there are no colors that actually lie on each one of these perfect colors. They're a little bit warmer than they, uh, would appear here or a little bit cooler so for every color on the color wheel there is a warm a warmer version of it and a cooler version now i've chosen a warmer blue which is ultramarine blue and then um the i've chosen transparent orange and um it's just i'd say that it um does lean toward the red it's kind of like a reddish orange so maybe a little bit more like this uh, that's just a little something I wanted to add, but I could have chosen any complement. I could have chosen, you know, violet and yellow or um, like a tertiary color, red, violet, and yellow, green, um, just so that they're across from each other on the color wheel. I'm going to just start doing my mark making. to be predominantly cool and I want that to be predominantly warm so I'm going to do the opposite in the beginning which is kind of a fun thing to do. Now I could use a brayer but I, I like to use my Messermeister in some ways more because maybe it's because they're easier to clean and they, you get this geometric edge which I really like so I am loading my Messermeister. There's quite a bit on there and I'm not going to worry about what's here. I'm just going to apply this and it's very intense as you can see, it, but it's very transparent and you can see, um, you, you can't see it as well as I can, but even these fine marks, I can see that right beneath the paint. Can you all hear? Okay. All right. Hope you're all doing okay. Oh, if you guys can like the um, the demo, I appreciate it. Um, YouTube is kind of funny, but they will play my video more if you guys like it. And um, obviously, the more likes I get, then I can grow my channel more, and then I can bring more content to you. So that's always nice.
flip forward and transparent? Oh, great question. Because um, uh, there is a word for it too. Those those people who are printmakers, you may know the word. Um, has a I think it has to do with viscosity. It has the word viscosity in it, but it does slip over the top because the um, the transparent paint has more oil in it, so the opaque has less. Um, so you're kind of going lean over fat, and that's what happens. You know, we talk about fat over lean, but when you go lean over fat, um, it's kind of like slipping on a banana. <laughs> All I can think of, I mean, is it's kind of like, you know, the banana's not um, oily, but I mean, it's that kind of thing that's happening. It's just slipping over the top of it. Um, but you know, when, you're, when you've are when you got like oil and cold wax medium and everything, you don't have to worry about the fat of lean thing because it's, it's very minimal. It's, you know, it may be slipping, but, but everything is just fine. You don't have to worry about that. all for being here and uh, I went much longer than I thought I would wow that's almost two hours but um but that's what happens when you paint <laughs> so thanks for being here everybody and I guess I'll just close the uh, live right now and um just thanks again for being here and I'll see you next time okay so thanks everybody bye now